Laura Magnuson works with NeuroChallenge Foundation, a nonprofit group providing education and advice for people with Parkinson disease. One of the uh, goals of NeuroChallenge is to get people information um, at whatever level that they can understand it and maybe are ready for it. Magnuson and other volunteer advisors meet with clients to develop personalized care programs, identifying services in the community that might help the patients. She says a question that often comes up is how to address long-term care planning when you're diagnosed with Parkinson's. Long-term care planning, it's important for everybody on this earth. Uh, but when you add a diagnosis like Parkinson's disease, um, what your plan is for the future becomes more important. Long-term care can include medical and non-medical care. It can assist people with Parkinson's with everyday needs like dressing, bathing, using the bathroom. She says it's often something people don't think about. Barry and Carol Lewis haven't discussed it yet. I don't know. We hadn't even talked about that. I don't know. Well, I think we have different ideas about it. According to Medicare.gov, about 9 million men and women over the age of 65 will need long-term care this year alone. Institutional care at an assisted living facility or nursing home may be required, and the cost could exceed $100,000 per person each year. Magnuson says it's important to think about care before you need it, but many don't. A lot of people, I think, are afraid. They don't want to think about the future. Um, I hear that a lot. I don't want to think about the future. Um, I just need to get through today. NeuroChallenge Foundation recommends you seek information from an expert. It is very important that you sit down early, early on while you have a full grasp of all of the possibilities. Babette Bach is an elder law attorney. When you are actively facing an illness process, it, it's an obligation you owe to your caregivers. It can be extremely stressful for the caregivers to have to go to a bank and find out that they can't write a check for you and you've suddenly ended up in the hospital. Bach recommends you see someone experienced in issues of dealing with disability, someone who's up to date on the programs available to help you get the care you need. You may not be aware that there are VA benefits out there that might pay you $1,900 a month for home care. Having a plan could provide relief to know you won't be financially devastated by the disease. So what happens if you wait too long to plan? If, if you don't plan and uh, you become ill, then you're going to end up with uh, a family member or the state coming in and following a guardianship proceeding to have you declared incapacitated and then having the court choose who will be your legal guardian to make all your health care decisions and your financial decisions. Um, that's, that's a terrible alternative. If you don't plan ahead, your voice will no longer be heard. Your decision no longer respected. Your caregivers powerless. They will not be able to call an insurance company and borrow on a life insurance policy if they need cash to pay for home care. They won't be able to apply for governmental programs. They need to have authority to make important financial and health care decisions, uh, if, if, even if you're just temporarily disabled. It's a lot to think about, and Magnuson reminds patients it's not a mountain they have to climb today. It's a goal for patients to consider, a plan to give them more control and to keep them independent for as long as possible. And then we know people may not be ready for that, that level of information yet but we simply support in seeking out information does not mean you need to make a decision today about anything. For more information, go to neurochallenge.org and click on the long-term planning link. This video was made possible in part through a grant from Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Foundation, Inc. and people just like you.